All right, so what we've done is we've actually built up uh, our simple conveyor logic, and we've done that several different ways. We've done the function block, we've done sequential function chart, or we're going to do sequential function chart, but uh, we've done ladder logic, and now we're doing structure text, right? So what is the best logic to have all this working? Uh, again, what the best logic is should be determined upon your scope of work, uh, how easy it is for the person behind you to read, meaning reliability, how does it you know, recover, how does it... How does this machine recover and how does the, the process work um, and when then the very last thing you should consider is how easy is it the person behind you to read and understand and interpret the data that you have actually programmed so the logic right now um, again when it comes down to it um, we did the uh, sequential function or we did function chart right which you see is not working right now there are no functions in here working because I have no JSRs to anything but my structured text and uh, the ladder logic as well, you see there's nothing running, okay? And I do have this tied to the OPC, it is running. Um, and you can see in my structured text, this is currently what I have running. So I'm, what, to explain this, all right, let's actually go through and explain this a little bit deeper. Let's widen this out just a little bit and give us a little bit more room. All right, so let's pop up our IO. And in this case, we said our photo Y1 Okay, photo I one, photo photo I one right here, which is right here. Well, and what we're saying is the same thing we said in, in ladder logic. If not photo I one and not photo I two, and not conveyor forward and not conveyor reverse, then we want to actually turn on the conveyor forward. Now that is to initiate the first, the very first function, right? The very first thing. So basically, what we're saying is, is if we restarted the system. And instead of it coming in and basically if I started from scratch, it's got to start somewhere. And we want it to start going forward so it goes this direction and hits the photo eye. Now that is the only time this logic is used. Okay. Therefore, the rest of the time, the logic down here is what keeps it running. And let me show you that. Okay. So uh, again, when it comes down to it, uh, let's actually shrink this down because I want both the screens to be showing. And that way you can get a uh, an easier understanding of this. This side by side. Okay, so now I can actually highlight this. Okay, so again, when it comes down to it, now if photo I2 is made and not photo I1, then conveyor forward is, is in a one. We, we turn it on, right? So we activate conveyor forward and we turn off conveyor reverse. Can, this is completely safe, completely, um, reliable completely functional uh, because this this does the exact same thing that our ladder logic did a lot easier uh, and it's real simple to write and read right it's not very complex whatsoever um, so again could this be done for a simple conveyor yes um, is it more likely that it would be done in ladder logic or our structure text more likely that it would be done in in, in uh, ladder logic right but could it be done in structure text yes so and now the next day, stage right here is if photo I1 is made and not photo I2, then we want to reverse the conveyor. And then we want to turn off the f conveyor forward, right? So that is how this very simple statement works. And you can see now how I, and a lot of people may have questions on how I got the, uh, the actual data to, to come up. Because normally when you're looking at, at structured text, it looks just like this, right? So I toggled this very, this hourglass right here, or the, the glasses to toggle the inline view. Um, I toggled that so I can see the, the live data of my actual structure text at that time. So I'm keeping this very um, as simple as possible to read, right? And they gave this feature available in 30, version 31 and above. So you have that uh, availability. Now don't quote me on that. It may have came in on 30, version 30 or whatever the case may be, but moving forward, if you have versions, I believe 31 or above, you are going to have this feature. Um, again, when it comes out to it, I don't believe it was in the legacy versions at all. I know it was not in version 20 uh, at all. So, uh, but again, when it comes out to it, you could always hover over it and get the value, but it just wasn't real time. And you always could do the watch feature. Um, so there was a watch feature that you can do and always watch it just like that. So there, that's always been uh, part of the the aspect as well so but keeping back to the logic of making this work right 
again, when we restart the system, every time we restart the system, that is the only time. So let me get this over here. So I want you to see the whole system running. Okay, so I'm gonna start the system. And when I do, keep in mind this logic, that's when this logic will take, in, take effect. So right now, if we, let's just say we write a zero into all this logic. So actually it's it's being written to by obviously the, the tags um, because right now it's saying that nothing is made um, and it's going to make it. So it's kind of, it's already rewriting itself. So, um, but in this aspect, if we start, we're going to run forward. And then as soon as this photo eye gets made, then we will transition to run this one and then we'll transition to run this one right now so you can see the way that works right so uh again um the way the the process works is very 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 easy to understand very easy to comprehend uh, you can always shorten these down to just that statement right there and you can see the way that works right so you can see I mean, the, the function block is our, our, our structure text has gotten so much easier to read throughout the years of Rockwell automation. And, and basically, this is your, your prime outcome as of uh, 2022. And again, uh, actually before that, really, but as this video is being made in 2022. So just keep in mind um, the functionality and the, the purpose behind what I'm showing you here is a very simple illustration of a, 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 con a box on a conveyor. And all we're trying to do is get it to go from point A to point B. We're trying to get it to go back and forth all day long. It doesn't matter. That's the functionality. Very simple to do. But again, what language, what PLC language is, is the best for it? Structure text, function block, sequential function chart, or ladder logic, right? In my in my opinion, 99.9% of people are going to do this and ladder logic. Now, can you challenge yourself and do it in different languages? Yes, you can. But understanding the, the, the logical implementation of that is going to be what really helps you grow. And now, again, we built the same thing in, in function block, right? We built it in ladder too. Now, the ladder is not running right now and the, the function block is not running because, again, our JSR is strictly to our um, structure text. So our structure text is giving us the value that we need right now. It's giving us the operation of our machine right now. So with all that said, I wanted to show you a structure text version of this and notice I'm changing my tags, my tag names. See, my tag names are changing. I notice I'm changing my tag names so that you can easily understand that I am actually controlling different functions and different, um, I'm controlling different uh, tag tags as we build it, right? So when we're doing this, I'm doing this for two separate reasons, to get clarity to my OPC topic and so when I'm, I'm talking to easy PLCs and machine simulator to get absolute clarity so that this tag is not being overwritten by another tag I'm giving. So that's the reason why I'm changing the name of my tag. Notice this says photo I1, photo I2. And over here on the ladder logic, it says PE1, PE, actually PE underscore one, PE underscore two. And the function block said PE1, PE2. So the tag names are completely different throughout the whole, whole thing. Right, so just keep in mind, we're doing that to keep them to every time we separate the different type of PLC language that we're using to give clarity to that, right? So, and we're giving clarity to the OPC topic. So the OPC topic can, can then relay the information properly to our machine simulator. So no matter what uh, you're doing, an OPC topic is gonna to work the exact same way. So keep in mind your tag structure and the data you're giving to your OPC is very important. So I'm doing that for multiple reasons, but I wanted to show you this again. The main implementation of this video was to show you this in a structured text, structured text format. So with all that said, hopefully you got a lot out of this video and you're getting a lot out of this series um, when it comes down to it. When, when you're understanding what language is best for what implementation, can you do it? Yes, you can. Should you do it? Maybe not. Again, goes back to the three principles. What's the scope of work? making it reliable, and then making it easy for somebody to read behind you. So with all that said, hopefully you learned a lot on this video. We'll see you guys on the next one.